little by little, every day, little by little, every way, my Jesus is changing me. He's changing me. Since I made a turnabout face, I've been growing in his grace. My Jesus is changing me. You know, Barney, that is a song about sanctification. Sancta what? <laughs> sanctification. Sancta what? Sanctification. What is sanctification? Well, uh, to sanctify means to set apart for a holy purpose. Does that mean God sets us apart for a holy purpose? Well, let's see. If we've been effectually called by God for salvation, then yes, 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 yes. You see, do you remember in our previous lessons, what are the benefits of those who are effectually called? What benefits they receive? Oh, yeah. They receive um, justification. That's one. Adoption. That's two. And sanctification. Oh, yeah. And justification means that God forgives our sins and declares us legally righteous. And adoption means that God welcomes us into his family as his very own children. And sanctification, and sanctification, me, and sanctification, oh, what does sanctification mean? Well, let's see. According to the catechism, uh, sanctification, sanctification is a work of God's free grace by which we are renewed in the whole person after the image of God and are enabled more and more to die into sin and live unto righteousness. Oh, thanks for clearing that up. Well, now, Chester, uh, tell the truth. How much of that did you understand? Um, uh, pretty much nothing. Okay, then. Let's go through it little by little. As in, little by little, every day, little, well, well, sort of, but let's just say I'll go through the answer to the catechism, and every time you hear something that you don't understand, just say, hold it. Okay, I think that's pretty straightforward. All right, then. Let's see. Sanctification is a work of God's free grace. Hold it! Now, I know from the earlier lessons that grace is a special favor that God gives to his chosen people. That's right. And I also know that the grace of God is free, unearned, unmerited. We cannot work for God's grace and we cannot buy it. Right again. But with the first two benefits, the catechism said that they were acts of God's grace. But with sanctification, the catechism is said to be a work of God's grace. That is extremely observant of you, Chester. Way to go. And did you know there is an important difference between an act of God's grace and a work of God's grace? Now, justification and adoption are acts of God's grace because they are they are things that are that God does to us all at once. In a moment of time when we're born again, that is when the Holy Spirit regenerates us when we start believing in Jesus. When we are justified, we are perfectly justified. God forgives us instantly and he declares us righteous and we are legally righteous, boom, all at once. And when we are adopted by God the Father, we are adopted as his very own children. We're not a little bit his children and a little bit more his children as time goes on. No, boom, we are his children. We're perfectly adopted. We will never be more justified and more adopted than we are now if we are saved, if we're born again. But sanctification is a bit different. 
Sanctification is a work of God's free grace, meaning that it is a process, not a one-time act. Sanctification begins when we first believe in Jesus because God sets us apart. He sanctifies us for himself. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, it says, God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. But then sanctification continues as a process throughout our whole lives. We become more and more sanctified as the Holy Spirit changes us. Hmm, okay, so an act of God is something that happens all at once, but a work of God is something that God begins when we are saved, but he continues throughout all our lives. Exactly, Chester, you're learning really well. An act of God's grace is something that God does all at once to us, but a work is something that God does in us, and it is a process, something that happens over a long period of time. What is it that God does in us over that long period of time as he sanctifies us? Well, let's see. I'll continue with the answer in the Catechism. Sanctification is a work of God's free grace by which we are renewed. Hold it! What does renewed mean? Well, um, renewed means to make new again, to give fresh life to something or to someone. Why do we need to be renewed? Aren't we good enough the way we are? No. Remember the fall? Remember when Adam and Eve fell in the garden? Yeah. Well, when Adam and Eve fell, they fell into sin and their whole nature was corrupted. And that corrupt nature was passed on to all of their children, to all of us, to, to me and to you. So even though we're still in the image of God, that image has been damaged. And, and, but when we're saved, we're forgiven of our sins and declared legally righteous. But sanctification is a process in which the Holy Spirit changes our natures and makes us actually righteous from the inside. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses uh, 23 and 25, the Apostle Paul says, Be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. You see, when God sanctifies us, he renews our whole person after the image of God. The image of God? But I thought that we were already made in the image of God. Yes, we were. But remember, that image was damaged by Adam's fall when he fell into sin his nature was corrupted, and that passed on to all of us. But when we become believers in Jesus Christ, God sanctifies us by restoring the image of God in us, by making us more and more like his son Jesus. More like Jesus? Does the Bible say that God makes Christians more like Jesus? Yes. In Romans 8 verse 29... The Apostle Paul says, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he, that's Jesus, might be the firstborn among many brethren. So, what happens to those who are sanctified? Well, the Catechism says that sanctification is a work of God's free grace by which we are renewed in the whole person after the image of God and are enabled more and more to die to sin, and to live to righteousness. What does it mean to die to sin and live to righteousness? Well, it means that we are to realize that we are no longer slaves to sin. Before we were, si we were saved, we were slaves to our sinful nature, and we were dead in our trespasses and sins. We were slaves to the devil, but now that we are in Jesus Christ, we have been set free from the bondage of sin and death. We are dead to sin, but we're alive in Jesus Christ. We are free and alive, free and alive to live for Christ in righteousness. Hmm, but sometimes I still sin. What should I do? Well, 
Romans chapter 6, verse 11 says, Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, so that verse says we are to reckon or consider ourselves as dead to sin. We are to realize that we have been set free from those sins and believe that we are alive to God because we are in Christ Jesus. Will remembering who we are and what God has done for us help us not to sin? It most certainly will. In Colossians chapter 3 verses 9 and 10, the Apostle Paul tells us, Do not lie to one another. Since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Now, the old man is our sinful self. But because we're in Christ, we have the new man who has a renewed mind that sees things differently now that we are saved. The new man sees things more and more the way God sees them. And the new man walks in the power of the Holy Spirit. Our flesh, that is, our sinful nature, desires sinful, bad things. But the Holy Spirit, who is inside of us, desires holy, godly things, good things. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, the apostle reminds us when he says, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So as we walk under the power and the direction of the Holy Spirit, we become more and more like Jesus Christ. But if we are becoming more like Christ as we get older and older, why do people who are old get weaker and weaker and more frail? Well, physically, uh, people may get weaker and more frail when they become older. What is physically? Well, physically means in the body. So old people might get weaker and more frail and get hurt more in the body. But if they're walking in the spirit, they become stronger spiritually on the inside. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, the Apostle Paul says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. That means even though our bodies are getting old and frail and they're dying, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Hmm. So when does sanctification stop? Can a person ever say, I am now completely sanctified. I am all that God wants me to be. Well, as long as we're living in this life, in this world, on this side of eternity, we are still a work in progress. God will continue his work of sanctifying us and refining us and improving us until the day we die and God calls, calls us home to be with him forever. So then I'll never be perfect? Well, not in this life, but... If we keep moving on forward toward the prize that God has for us when we're resurrected in the world to come, we will be perfect. Uh, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, the Apostle Paul says, Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. But what happens to us in the meantime? Well, in the meantime, God is changing us, transforming us into his image more and more. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 says, But we all, with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. And then, when Jesus returns, what happens then? Well, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, we are told, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. 
But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. When Christ appears, we will see him shining in glory, and we will be changed. We will be like Jesus Christ. No more sin, no more whining and complaining, no more uh, sinful anger, no more fighting, no more sadness and crying, but we will be all that is right, good, kind, loving, and holy. We will be completely and perfectly sanctified. Sanctification is pretty exciting. And just think, every day that I walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, I am becoming more and more sanctified, more and more like Jesus. I can hardly wait until the day that I'm completely sanctified when I see Jesus. And remember that all of this will happen because the Father loved and chose you and sent his Son to die on the cross for your sins and rise from the dead. Yeah, isn't it amazing? that it always comes back to Jesus and the cross. Without Jesus and his death and resurrection, none of these wonderful benefits, justification, sanctification, adoption, none of them would even be possible. You got that right, Chester. You know, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10 says, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Wow, that's awesome. I wish I could stay and talk about this even more, but I think my parents are coming to the door to pick me up real soon. Well, Chester, since you're about to leave leave soon, I'll leave you with this blessing from the Word of God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, the Apostle Paul says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, folks, see you next week, Lord willing, when we learn about the several benefits that flow from justification, adoption, and sanctification. See you soon. God bless.